So, hello everyone. Um, welcome at this talk on Grails 3, um, a, f a very cool framework for uh, rapid development of Java web applications. Um, so, first, um, uh, yeah, let me introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Kuhn Aben, and this is Ted. Uh, think, uh, we both work at a company called First Aid, uh, where we are uh, open source Java consultants uh, working with uh, yeah, open source products from, uh, for instance, Red Hat, uh, but also on Grails. Um, so we are core developers and we really like open source. Um, so, but we are also interested in you. Um, uh, can I see some hands on um, how many people are developer in this room? So ev everybody uh, almost. Uh, uh, how many people uh, have uh, experience in Java or do Java development? Yeah. Okay. And and who uh, has uh, used Grails before, uh, or w and, and who wants to use Grails? <laughs> well, I think uh, maybe at the end. Uh, maybe at the end. Yeah. <laughs> so Grails is very innovative. Um, it's a um, different kind of flavor of Java framework. It has um, um, a very a lot of helpful features that make you develop faster and, and um, yeah, with a lot of more components that, uh, from the open source community that come for free. So, but it's not a choice that uh, it, it, yeah is for for every company uh, uh, yeah standard, uh, but. Uh, uh, Grails and Groovy are are increasing in popularity, and it's because it's so innovative. Uh, so we, we are using. Um, uh, 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 just a moment. Does everybody understand uh, English, or can we continue in Dutch? Yeah, English. English. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, we um, really like uh, to develop in Grails. Um, yeah, for all sorts of things. Uh, but last year, um, the people behind Grails has uh, done a new release with um, uh, yeah, all lots of uh, cool features, uh, which we're going to present today. Um, so with this talk, we'll have two parts. Uh, part one, I will introduce uh, the Groovy architecture and show you why it's so fast and uh, yeah, modern um, way of working with Java. So um, people often say about Java that it is verbose, that it is uh, yeah difficult in performance. But uh, Cruzy shows the other sides of uh, an application that uh, can be run in only with only one line and also a lot of performance solutions. So um, like health endpoints and metrics. Um, but I will also show you the project structure and uh, yeah, see how, how the architectural uh, stuff is combined. Uh, then Ted, uh, our colleague, uh, will uh, demo uh, a lot of his uh, uh, yeah, uh, groo groovy features, um, newest groovy features that are really interesting to, to see, um, such as uh, easy tag libraries, um, such as um, yeah, yeah, how domain classes relate to the database really easy um, and how, um, yeah, which is very new for an architecture to have reactor events, um, so uh, new types of uh, actions on the user face, user interface, and uh, Ted will show those. And also uh, he has prepared some integration tests and those are normally difficult to make, but, not, but with Groovy it's a lot easier. So Groovy adds really a lot of magic to the Java platform, and it also runs uh, native on, on the uh, JVM. So it's really um, well integrated with Java. It saves a lot of development time. So this is um, a typical uh, uh, Hello World application in Groovy, um, it, and it will um, provide a web application in only uh, yeah, five lines. So uh, if you program like this, you save a lot of time in Java. Yes? I'm just missing how we got from Grails to Groovy. Uh, Grails is the um, web framework that uses Groovy as, um, yeah, as inner language. Okay. Uh, but you can also use uh, Java inside Grails. Uh, um, but um, it's, yeah, Groovy and Grails go hand in hand. 
uh, Grails is the web framework, and it's uh, it, it is the based upon the philosophy of yeah the well-known framework Rails, um, but it's the it's the, the groovy um, um, yeah language uh, flavor. Um, so um, so the bigger picture for Grails, uh, Ted will talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <coughs> Um, so that was, a, that was an excellent question. How did, did we get <laughs> to, uh, to some code? Uh, it's, everything runs on the uh, JVM, the Java Virtual Machine, uh, of course. Um, uh, you have to write it once and it will run anywhere if there's an implementation for that particular platform. Um, Java, of course, but you can also write Groovy. So it's just, uh, to go from Java to Groovy, it's just a rename of the extension, then it's basically a groovy file, and then you can skip a lot of the, um, the syntax. You can get rid of the semicolons and uh, per parents and all kinds of stuff. Um, the groovy language has its own uh, website. It's an open source uh, project. Um, if it loads up, it's on groovyline.org. Um, you can also use it for, if you're not uh, that well, uh, um, um, in, uh, for uh, sh shell scripts or Unix, uh, Unix scripts, you can write your scripts in, in Groovy, for instance. Uh, so you, you can download this as a separate project. Uh. Oh. Cool. Yeah. Same browser. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, on top of uh, this all, we have uh, Gradle. It's a, it's a build system. It's uh, the successor to, well, some call it Maven, uh, which is a successor to Ant. Uh, Gradle is on gro built in Groovy itself. Uh, Spring, Spring MVC, Spring Boot, uh, Spring everything, dependency injection, and what have you. Uh, Side Mesh for the presentation layer. Um, the decoration of layouts and snippets and templates. Uh, H2 is the in-memory database, um, which makes for very rapid uh, integration testing. So you don't really have to have a uh, separate database somewhere uh, already. Um, it's shipped within uh, the framework. Uh, GORM stands for Grails Object Relational Mapping, uh, which is built on top of Hibernate. And uh, for those of you who have done uh, Java projects uh, in the past, you might be familiar with just the, uh, these uh, separate uh, frameworks, um, such as uh, Hibernate, which is a very familiar JPA implementation, Java Persistency uh, API. Um, and of course, uh, these all are by its own um, very mature open source projects. So um, this is a complete integration of all these in, in one package, basically. It's a full stack framework uh, because it combines all these. Um, then you have to build your own application and it uses uh, convention over configuration. Uh, there are a few main concepts here. The model, which contains uh, basically the business logic. So what is your application about? It's about orders, or animals, or persons. A few, something has to be exposed to the user. Um, by default, it's an HTML5 uh, view in Groovy server pages. And we have controllers. So it's, it's the MVC pattern, uh, which is uh, quite old, um, which delegates all the user actions from the browser to the, the necessary views and the data. And Last but not least, services. So uh, services, they um, uh, allow to uh, have e everything happen inside a transaction, for instance. Commit everything or roll back everything. And it has a great plugin ecosystem. So um, basically, if it's not in the framework, uh, there's a big chance someone already out there created a plugin for it, for you to just uh, well pull in and, uh, and use it. Um, like I said uh, of, uh, in, in, uh, earlier, Hibernate is the default uh, persistency provider. Uh, it's an object relational mapper. 
but if you're more into a NoSQL uh, stuff, a document database or graph database, there's a Neo4j uh, plugin, MongoDB, Cassandra, uh, just basically swatch the persistency provider and um, yeah, you're up and running with your own uh, persistency. Uh, all by plugins. And of course, uh, this all is in, uh, in the Grills uh, framework. Uh, and the website is on uh, grills.org. Everybody's also on the Wi Fi, it seems. Okay, well, trust me, yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, it's here. Um, so if you want to try this out at home, just go to uh, download <coughs> and download uh, the zip. And uh, you can use uh, NetBeans or Eclipse uh, to get started, but even on the command line or with VM or what have you. So this is basically uh, the big picture. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, so while um, um, Ted mentioned that Grails has a pluggable architecture, um, it's, it's good to understand that in uh, the Grails 2, um, they, those uh, components were plugged together um, via the Grails framework. So uh, it was uh, not uh, a natural way of, of doing Java. Uh, it, it was um, uh, yeah, not based on um, the industry standards. Uh, that and but but now uh, in Grails 3 it is it is based uh, the gluing of the plugins is is based on two standards uh, or two evolving standards uh, Gradle and Spring Boot and uh, those two make sure that uh, uh, you can uh, yeah combine everything inside a, 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 a Grails application um, and in two different ways. So Grails, uh, Gradle uh, is, you can see that as a, a flexible build tool. Beforehand, um, there was a, a, a Grails um, execute, uh, batch, batch file uh, that uh, you could give some commands. Uh, but the industry uses uh, Gradle a lot. It's a really evolving framework to uh, do very flexible and powerful builds. Um, it's, um, and now uh, Grails 3 also has adopted it. Um, the other flavor uh, for gluing is Spring Boot. And Spring Boot comes with um, st yeah, standard uh, profiles for, um, yeah, uh, the, for architectural components for your application. So you have, um, um, you, you can just add really simply uh, yeah, important components in your application just via configuration. And it's, it will be the front end for a lot of Spring frameworks. So you can really bootstrap a Spring uh, project really fast. That's why it's called Spring Boot. So, uh, but, but, so, but let me first explain um, the, the first uh, yeah, glue method, Gradle. So Gradle um, is very young um, in, in popularity. So it, it existed for uh, yeah, about six years or something, but now it really has momentum because it can do everything that the traditional build tools all also do, well, only better. Um, it combines the powers and, and gives um, things that we are uh, that, that are new. Uh, so for instance, we were, uh, as Java developers, always um, restricted by Maven. Uh, Maven told you how to uh, configure everything for the, for the build. And uh, if it wasn't possible in Maven, uh, yeah, it, it, the, the, that, that was your problem. But now um, Gradle combines also the flexibility of Ant. And Ant can, um, is known for, you can just add any task and uh, you can j build any uh, build process that you would like in your organization with Ant. So, um, but uh, yeah, also the dependency management is really uh, well um, uh, done. Um, and also um, it has learned from Jant um, 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 to how to um, make beautiful um, um, code from builds in a DSL, domain specific language. So um, with Gradle, you, um, pro you can program your build in any way you want um, and make your own DSL for it or reuse that. Uh, 
there's a, lar a large community for it, and um, you can reuse something from the open source community. So, um, yeah, to, 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 so to summarize, Gradle is flexible and gives you control. So it's not like you have a build tool as before, uh, such as Maven, that said, well, this is not possible to do uh, with this tool. So uh, all, you, you want to uh, have build power, but uh, you, you can't get it because um, it's not uh, standard as, uh, as Maven uh, is designed. So, uh, and also Maven was known, and Ant uh, was known for having a lot of XML. And Gradle, that's the beauty of it. You can, um, you, you can program in the same language as you're used to. You can program in Groovy, so you can also program in Java. So you can program your build in, in Java and not being, uh, needing to, to read all these XML files. So um, if you, uh, you start with Gradle, you can stop uh, using the XML uh, help. Um, so and Gradle is really simple. It's just one line. Uh, here uh, that uh, identifies a task and uh, identifies a task that does something really simple, just print a line. And um, it's, as you can see, uh, it's Groovy code, uh, but the Groovy code is actually translated Java code. So it will, um, it's, it's, uh, so you can make all your Java commands inside the build. So um, to, to just emphasize its power, um, it's a powerful build tool. It's, you can program your builds in, in DSL. Um, and one of the things is that um, was not in previous build frameworks. It's fully backed by a company called Gradle itself. And Gradle, uh, the Gradle company is full-time developing the, Gra the, the Gradle build framework. So it evolves very fast. It is now um, yeah, a million dollar company that uh, provide, uh, is very hot on Java conferences and on, on Java, uh, yeah, new Java projects. So it's a lot better than Maven, which was the standard for built uh, configuration. And it's even used by Google and, uh, as a standard. And uh, so every, if you develop for Android, you have to use Gradle. Um, and that's uh, a blessing because you can also you can use uh, you can program a lot better um, um, on your Android devices uh, with that. So if you want to know more, here's the URL for Gradle.org. It's really well documented web website with easy examples to get started. Um, but maybe it's good to look uh, at examples beforehand. So how does it look uh, to build in Gradle? Uh, we have prepared um, an application. Um, it's um, it's a, a blogging application, but it also shows uh, metrics on on yeah the usage of the blog. Um, so uh, oh uh, no, I'm going to show you this different application. Um, uh, you can see here, um, it's also the, the project that will uh, demonstrate. Uh, you can see here, um, there's a, a Gradle build file. And when I touch it, um, I see all these build tasks here. Um, just like we're, uh, yeah, know from Ant, having a lot of tasks. Uh, and I can, um, yeah, run a task like uh, building. Um, and then, um, yeah, I can. I can build something. And um, so you can see here how it processes internally. And um, yeah, here you can see the console uh, um, of the application. So it's really simple uh, to use. Um, it, and um, you just click on something. And you can also do, yeah ask for what are the dependencies uh, inside of the uh, application, so what are the, the libraries that are used. Small, uh, small addition, uh, this is specifically the build ship plugin in Eclipse, which delegates to Gradle under the hood. Yes. So it's, Gradle, it's not a UI application <laughs> like this, but this is the, the plugin, so we don't have to leave uh, Eclipse. Uh, yes. Yeah. You can also use, um, uh, let me see, you, you can also use um, it via the uh, command line. Um, 
I, I stop an application now. It's uh, this application. It's the same yeah. uh, application on blogging with metrics. And I can start it just like this with a Gradle boot run. So, and, and you can uh, you can see how um, yeah I can still go back to Maven if I want uh, because I have created. Oh yeah. Oh. Because if I have created um, um, a task here that says I create a Maven POM, and, um, and then uh, it will read out all resources uh, used in the in this application, and so and it writes to uh, the POM file. So that's a, a task. Uh, there are many other tasks you can just program and. Uh, and have a and, and have the build process in your organization that you like, instead of uh, uh, the, the something that the the the, the frameworks uh, yeah uh, dictates. So that's um, really powerful in Grails three. Uh, the other thing. Standard build file laten zien van Grails. Oh, the do we straks. Um, so the other things for um, uh, to for showing the power of of Grails three, um, uh, yeah, is, is you using uh, Spring Boot, and it's um, um, it 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 comes with combinations of Spring best practices of using Spring in the um, in, yeah, yeah, in the community, and um, having pre-configured um, sets uh, of uh, library. So you um, you start with Spring Boot, and you you have all these production-ready uh, configurations uh, that you can uh, use, uh, but also in um, uh, ways that you want. So it's it's prepared to make easy to ad adaptation. So it's easy to um, uh, to adapt to your needs. So it's an instant uh, container for uh, your your Spring uh, libraries. Uh, usable for uh, yeah the microservices or um, yeah, smart configuration or Spring security or performance metrics or development uh, such as reloading. So it's a very easy abstraction layer on top of all these complex Spring frameworks. Um, and then comes the beauty out of it. Uh, things that you get for production purposes for free. Um, allowing you uh, to be more of a DevOps as a developer. So more in charge of, of the production uh, capabilities of your software. Um, Grails uh, 3 with Spring Boot provides metrics and um, uh, ways to uh, yeah, get feedback of your application in production. Um, so you can be a DevOps. And beforehand, um, yeah, uh, people know that are not, not known to the DevOps concept, it's about um, uh, yeah, operations and developers uh, yeah, are in silos and when something goes wrong in operations as a developer you um, are yeah you don't have a, a way of um, uh, you, you get really uh, um, yeah bad feedback sometimes and um, uh, yeah being a DevOps allows you to take control yourself um, so how does Spring Boot support um, met with metrics in production. It's some also something also interesting to see. Um, so I have a um, um, small application ready. Uh, I have to um, so this is a an, yeah yeah a simple ap administration tool I made to show some microservices made with Spring Boot uh, for uh, microservices. And they um, yeah, have, a, um, I can, if I click on it, I get internal data of these applications. And uh, because Spring Boot allows you to build on the um, yeah, production uh, quality, uh, um, yeah, because it, 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 it gives that data to you. 
in, in JSON format. So if you have a, a, a sort of a web tool that reads that JSON data, you, you get it inside your, uh, yeah, your monitoring application. So this is a sample monitoring application. And I see here that this is the garbage collector, the yellow line, and how it works. And, um, yeah. and also other t data um, I can uh, click and, and view. Uh, for instance, here, a big log file uh, with all yeah, metrics. Um, and and um, yeah, there are other um, um, powerful tools to get uh, performance indications of your system uh, with Spring Boot. It's called uh, Actuator. Uh, so, uh, and it's um, really easy to uh, add it to your project. Um, if you go to, um, so this is the, an example, it still uses Maven. Um, And you only have to um, add this line to your application, and then your application will be um, uh, yeah, injected with performance metrics. And um, uh, yeah, it's just JSON files like here. Uh, I will show you. Um, but uh, so. It's um, the, you ha we have to look at the black thing, and here you see the data. And also, we can have other uh, yeah, config internal files, and so it's really easy to understand your application. So this is the um, Spring. Um, th this is how the application is built with beans, uh, with components, and so. You can see everything under the hood with uh, Spring Boot, and that's that's one really good advantage for uh, yeah, building good applications. Um, so that was um, uh, part of the demo, um, but um, there will be more demo because Ted has prepared uh, lots of cool groovy features to show you. Yeah. Um, let me first see if it's uh, still uh, running. Where is the uh, good? Is it this? No. Um, uh, oh, this is the sump this is a sample application and it's based on, on the Star Trek. Uh, we got our inspiration from Star Trek. So if you want to learn also on Star Trek uh, <laughs> you can have a look at the, our application. Let me first uh, restart it. Um, our favorite editor of choice is uh, Eclipse, Eclipse Mars. Um, uh, the project uh, structure um, is pretty simple. Uh, you have um, uh, a few files in the root and uh, basically a source where you can have some uh, Groovy or Java sources and tests and the, re the rest is in the Grails app uh, folder. Um, so this convention of a model view controller uh, you can see in the, uh, in the directory structure uh, because of the separate directories for controllers, domains, services, tag libs, views. So if you place source in those folders then the framework knows what they are. Uh, that's not only uh, that's only one part of the equation. Uh, the other part is the naming of uh, classes. Um, so, so it start restarted. Yeah. So, for instance, um, oh. you have to maybe the performance of the. Internet is too slow. Yeah, I'm sure. All the absolute cool. Yes.
Okay, um, there's an embedded uh, Tomcat inside, so that's uh, really easy for, uh, for development. So uh, we're waiting in the boot run uh, task uh, now. Hopefully. And maybe we should see whether or not we have some uh, stuff running here. Um, Gradle executions. Eclipse is uh, built on OSDI, and uh, we know how fun that uh, kind of technology is. <laughs> Oké, okay, de dashboard. So basically what you see here is the, our uh, sample application uh, dashboard, which is this, uh, this file. It, uh, it knew how to get here by uh, some URL mappings. We uh, dispatched the, basically the, 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 the route to uh, the dashboard controller index GSP. So that's why we end up here. So this, uh, this text is uh, the H1 and the paragraph, welcome to, that's this one. Um, and you see this is uh, kind of similar to HTML with a lot of custom uh, syntax in between. Um, we're using the, boots, the Twitter bootstrap framework for some nice uh, grid, uh, grid layout. Um, but you also see here some, uh, some stuff which are tag libraries. We'll get to that uh, in a moment. So basically this part between uh, which I highlighted is only shown when you're logged in. And the other part, or this is the not logged in part, and the other part is uh, when uh, you're logged in. So for instance, um, you can uh, add something. Uh, caps lock. Again. You can add uh, something here. Oh, go back. And I don't have to restart the application. That's the the auto relay lo reloading of uh, of changes. Uh, just simple changes in HTML or other resources or uh, Java or Groovy uh, code. Um, The, uh, this, uh, when I try to log in, for instance, as uh, Jean-Luc, two, three. Now the other part is, uh, is shown. It's this part. And you see here, hello, uh, dollar, curly brace, current person dot name. That's this part, that's the logged in person. Um, so how does the page know of the current person variable? Um, because that's not in here, that's in the, this is the view. But we went through a controller and that's the dashboard controller. Let me So basically if you see here slash Star Trek, actually what it under the hood is this. 
This is uh, the URL for the dashboard controller and the index action. That's the convention Grails uh, uses. So that's this class, it's a dashboard controller, that's in the name. And it has uh, an action here called index. So this is uh, well a regular Java class with some groovy in it because the dev keyword. No, Java doesn't know dev. It uses void or some other type. Uh, dev is new. It's, it's groovy, um, and that's the syntax here because this controller can basically return anything. It can return just a map. You see here, this is just a groovy map with some key values, key value pairs separated by a comma. Um, we're using Spring dependency injection because this uh, security service is just here um, by uh, some kind of magic. And that's just Spring outer wiring, just by name. So you don't have to type uh, a type here. Uh, the Spring service or, or the, the security service or security service impl or something. Just security service will do. The framework will give you that service, the singleton instance. They're all created upon startup, just one instance by default. Well, and the only task of this dash dashboard controller is to check whether or not we're logged in, and we are. Then get the logged in person through this security service and query all the colleagues of the logged in person. And that's basically what you see here. All the colleagues of uh, Jean-Luc Picard by this, uh, this query. Uh, yeah? I have a question. These prefix tags, are they namespaced? Yes, yeah. Yeah, normally uh, everything is in the uh, G namespace, G colon something, unless you explicitly use another one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the um, dashboard, con this, the, uh, this is the index, GSP, so you're referring to this one, SEC, and all the tag lips are here in Grails app tag. Lip. Uh, security tag lip. Ah. It's this one. Yeah. So this one also gets a security service injected, and you see several kinds of, um, well, tags, <laughs> username, if logged in, if not logged in, and, um, well, some others. And it Tag lib is basically the you want to do some code, but you don't want to mix it in the HTML itself. So you basically mean that they are tags and not namespaces. Uh, you can have multiple tags in different namespaces. So you can have the username tag. No, but can I uh, specify that uh, what the tag is in the HTML file, or is it the same for the whole project? Uh, no, no, no. It's not in the HTML file. It's here where you yeah, yeah. define so the. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is called sec here. So, yeah. You cannot. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so you already saw this. Um, this uh, this reloading. Uh, this current person. It came from. The dashboard controller, as current person, it's here. This is the model. So under this name we have the logged in person and under this name colleagues we have a collection of colleagues which are also persons because that's this one. So if you have a current person you can um, call whatever you want, whatever property you want on it from the GSP page, just save it. So now it says, welcome back Jean-Luc Picard. And uh, because Jean-Luc likes to be addressed with his rank, 
we also defined a rank current person dot rank shift Charlie Pratt is the captain at the moment so uh, who, how does this person uh, look it's a domain class uh, so let's collapse the views and the controllers uh, and go to domain so we have a few domain classes defined here uh, assignment, homeworld, mission, organization, person and a lot of uh, other stuff we thought it would be funny to uh, build an application around um, so this is the person it's basically a Java Pojo. If you were um, creating a regular Java application with Hibernate, you would be filling this one up with uh, all kinds of annotations to uh, show um, where what the table is in the database um, and what all the columns are, but it's done by convention. So I just have to define a string name and a species. Species. Um, have a static constraints block here, define my constraints, so I want name not to be full, uh, blank, and I want it to be unique, and so forth. Uh, just the regular Java two string override. And do something special if you want to delete a person instance. So I already said uh, it uses the H2 in memory database. Uh, you can start it up under slash DB console only if you're in development mode. It's uh, a really small, lightweight database. Um, so you can create your domain model first. You can talk to your uh, business analyst uh, for that, or your product owner, uh, before getting to any uh, nasty uh, database mapping stuff. Um, but once you have a domain model, just start up, and in, in the in-memory database creates it on the fly. So this is person. You see all the properties I have here, like uh, name and species, they're here. Name and rank. And you see that if there's a foreign key uh, to another domain class, such as species, you will see a species ID here, which is the foreign key to the species table. So uh, we like to think of that our application is not around SQL and rows and result sets. We like to think in domain classes. And this is where uh, Grails really shines um, by even abstracting away some of the, uh, the Hibernate uh, stuff by just using some conventions. You don't have to specify a primary key here. There's always a ID. An auto-incrementing primary key, it's a long. Um, and it uses optimistic uh, con uh, versioning or locking I have to say so there's also every uh, domain class has a version column it just increments a uh, integer and once you load an entity and you're saving it it checks the version with the one in the database and it can detect whether or not another person already modified your instance and it will fill with an uh, with an exception uh, but it's really great that there's this embedded H2 database inside uh, just for development purposes. And as soon as you go to test or acceptance or production, you want to have another real more, more production-like database like Postgres or MySQL or, uh, or Oracle. Um, so I get for free some scaffolded screens scaffolding that's um, oh I am of course inside uh. so if you want to create some CRUD screens create read update delete it's almost for free um, we didn't apply the fancy uh, look and feel uh, here um, but if you go to creating an organization you go to the organization controller create action and this is basically the default Grails view for, well, you get for free. And if you want to enter a new organization, and it's just enter. Uh, I don't have to do a thing basically for that, because this is the controller taking care of all this. The organization controller, I only have to say static scaffold is organization, the name of my domain class. And you will get a create action, a delete action, a save action, an index for the overview for free. 
So if your application is really simple, like a create, read, update, delete application, you're up in two minutes basically, by just defining the domain classes and getting basically all the, the overviews and the, in, and, the in, and the input and the output and all stuff uh, for free, which spe really speeds up uh, development. Um, only have 10 minutes. Um, look, let me see. Yeah, this is what uh, Kuhn uh, already uh, showed a bit. Um, the health check, it's just on the health endpoint. Yeah, you should ignore. Yeah. So basically, our general stat status of the application is now out of service. Um, you, it should be up. That's uh, really nice if you uh, want to configure uh, Nagios uh, just for checking the up. Um, then it will, it will use all the individual health checks here to determine the general status. Well, uh, unfortunately it's out of service because I created a particle health. The application uses a particle collector um, and I implemented here a health indicator of my own. I auto-wired the particle collector. As you can see, this is in source main Groovy. It's just a class annotated with add component. It's for Spring. Um, and this is uh, where I try to fix the uh, health check. That if the particle collector is actually online, I want it to be up the status of this health check and also to show some uh, well collected uh, particles else it uh, is down so hopefully if I just uh, refresh the screen uh, the status is now up uh, because the particle collector is up as you can see here and we haven't collected any particles yet um, So um, the reactor framework, that's a separate GitHub project, it's already embedded in Grails 3 and it uh, allows to send out events and listen to notifications inside your applications for instance. We have a class particle collector and it listens to an a event called particle detected by using this on annotation and this is from the reactor framework. Um, Services and controllers already get all these methods on and send and receive and stuff because this is a uh, spring bean of my own. I have to implement the events uh, trait. I get on. So now I can basically decouple who is doing something, the particle uh, scanner, which is sending out events and a class called Particle Collector, like this one, which is interested in these events. So now I already see here that the samples are going up. Might be nice to check it. And, uh, oh, that's a big font. Let me... Uh, now also... The, the Google chart here, uh, well, it gets, uh, gets updated by these events sent out by the particle uh, scanner, which are collected by the collector. Now, basically, this uh, one should say, uh, it should show the density of the last 15 precious particles, but it only shows two. Um, That's here. There's this cartography controller which um, allows for the chart to get all the data in uh, JSON format <coughs> and it only uh, returns uh, two for instance. This is uh, Groovy. Adds all kinds of nifty features on a collection, on the, the, the regular JDK uh, collections, group by, collect entries. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Car. Sorry. 
that or fee. There's basically the data going to to the to the graph. Um, oh man, I uh, had so much more I uh, wanted to show you, but we're running out of time. Um, Maybe one or two questions? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good one. Um, so, does someone has... <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so who, does someone have questions? Yeah, so if I re uh, to repeat the question, uh, uh, the, the statistics collection uh, gathering uh, that's, is it different from uh, uh, JMX. Uh, uh, you can get through JMX to these collections. So if, uh, if you don't want to go through the web interface or through uh, an endpoint, you can also have the JMX exporter, which uh, creates some M beans. So you can also check uh, the status of these, uh, these beans. Yeah, so there's Part one is actually the collecting of the stuff, of the metrics, and how you expose it. That's entirely configurable. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, yeah. The great thing we we think about Grails is it's built on top of all these great open source frameworks, um, and uh, we regularly, regularly, regularly have to dive into the code to see what actually is going on. If you think there's a bug somewhere, <laughs> so we can uh, pull something in from uh, GitHub and uh, well. Do a pull request if you think this, sh this should be better. So for your reference, uh, this is the sheet with all the links to all the, the projects. It's, it's clickable. I, I think we can get the sheets uh, downloadable. <laughs> yes. So if, there's, uh, if there are no questions anymore, uh, well, we'll thank you for your attention and uh, have a nice uh, day. Uh, yeah, thank you.